Hello, everyone, and welcome to Camera Music and Chamber Music Detroit. I'm Steve Wagaman, president of Chamber Music Detroit and producer of Camera Music. I'm here with my dear friends from the Juilliard String Quartet, and we'll we'll you'll see that there are only three of them, and quartets have four people. Um, and so let me introduce who's here. There's Aretta Zula, violinist, Astrid Schween, cellist, and Ron Copes, violinist. Uh, but Ron, in this upcoming concert, you're not playing the violin. No. And let's just tell everyone why, uh, that we lost uh, our dear, dear friend, Roger Tapping. Uh, uh, a couple of months ago, and uh, 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 tell us about Roger. That's a big, <laughs> a big task. Roger yeah. was a, obviously a very close colleague and very close friend, and he um, was an amazing musician and an amazing person and a, a, an amazing spirit. It just really affected everyone who he met and everyone he worked with. Um, and uh, his yeah. love for music was contagious mm -hmm. in any room he was in, including ours. He <laughs> he was the guy who would come in every single morning saying, can you believe this is what we do for a living? <laughs> yeah. day, loved string quartets, loved music mm -hmm. and yeah. the amount of love letters that we got yeah. from yeah. the musical community after his passing was incredible. Yes, really. It yeah. was off the charts. It was such an outpouring of affection and appreciation for him. Yeah. And he's just so beloved by his students and people who had a chance to coach with him over the years. It just really, the whole community is really bereft. Yeah. He was well, everyone's cheerleader. Yeah. 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 One, one of the great champions for music, irrespective of how he played. And oh, by the way, he played incredibly well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what, a, what a beautiful musician. Yeah. Uh, and, and of course, that means there's suddenly a vacancy in the Juilliard Quartet. And uh, I know in some of our many past interviews, we've talked about the the process of transitioning people in. And I know that your tradition is to do it very intentionally with lots of planning and, and so on. And um, I think this is the first time you've lost somebody mid-season. Uh, so this is, uh, yeah. Uh, it, it, there was someone lost mid-season back in the 60s. Okay. But um, um, it was, uh, uh, that was also something that was very sudden. Yeah, but not okay. since then. Not since then. Yeah. Well, and and I, I'm I'm certain the grass is not growing under your feet about that. But uh, uh, as as I remarked in one of my update letters that went out to audiences explaining that our program was going to be a little different this time, uh, that uh, likely anyone who would really be of interest to you already has concerts this spring. <laughs> Uh, uh, and that that would be totally unsurprising. And uh, isn't it fortuitous that Ron, uh, in a previous life, uh, you played viola with a very well-known ensemble? Tell us about that. Well, it was the Los Angeles Piano Quartet, and I um, it, I joined the the quartet simply because the cellist in that ensemble heard a performance of the of the Symphonia Contratante, in which I picked up the viola and practiced very hard in order to to play it and they were looking for a violist at the time and he approached me and said i think you need to play with us and i, I said peter i'm not a violist and he said i think you need to play with us <laughs> and so i sat down and played with them and really enjoyed it and then spent eight years in the in the, in the yeah. court touring as a well it's like placido domingo being told he's not a baritone <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. I, I won't. I won't ask you to reveal any secrets. But is there any chance that you might switch over to viola and then recruit another violinist for the Juilliard Quartet? <laughs> no. No. All right. I, I don't feel like I'm quite the violist for the Juilliard String Quartet. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I'm 
we're looking forward to hearing you in this in this different capacity. Uh, we have a, an interesting tradition. Um, uh, some of our donors have endowed chairs uh, in various instruments. And Astrid, you've been the uh, uh, the 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 uh, endowed chair, the day ch endowed chair in cello. Um, we don't yet have a chair and second violin, but I'm working on it. Um, and and uh, Aretta, I don't know if we had you in, in the, the Shufro violin chair, but we, we now actually have a viola chair. And uh, uh, we've decided to, uh, to name Roger to that chair, even if he's not in the room. Oh. Uh, and it's actually named after someone who uh, passed away a couple of years ago during COVID. Uh, and so for this, audience, uh, both of those names, Ron Goldman and Roger Tapping are dear, dear, dear friends. Uh, so we'll see a little of that in the program. But the program you've put together is just beautiful. Uh, why don't we start in the middle, uh, which is actually one of the great string trios of history. Uh, Christoph Penderewski, uh, uh, tell us about that piece. It's, it's kind of this amazing modernist thing, uh, what, about 15 minutes long. Uh, Mm -hmm. amazing piece it is well, what do we say <laughs> <laughs> we're learning it we're, now. we're <laughs> just rehearsing yes. it this morning well <laughs> we listened to it and we were completely intrigued by it yeah. mm -hmm. um he uses the three instruments so distinctly for mm -hmm. each one mm -hmm. and he features each one it begins with a feature of each instrument we all take solos um and it's sort of written in traditional form, I it's, would say. There's a lot of classical uh, yeah. uh, formal things that happen right. and, mm -hmm. and very, very uh, kind of Mozartian in some ways. I exactly. Mean, and, and even though it sounds dissonant a lot of the times, it's actually very clear as mm -hmm. to why he uses that kind of language it's yeah. it's a clearly written yeah. piece and it's quite interesting the second movement is a fugue mostly yeah. mostly well, a yeah. fugue um, yeah <laughs> it behaves like one behaves yeah like one. um people will be able to follow it i think yeah it's very the form is very familiar and the the motivic elements in play are, yeah. are easy yeah. easily discerned um it's playful yeah yeah well, I, I know it's, uh, and it's in that traditional spot of putting the contemporary piece in the middle of the program, but, but I, at, at, uh, you know, it, it sort of guarantees that they'll stay to the second half to hear the Brahms, <laughs> but, but uh, that's so cynical of me. I'm sorry. Uh, but, but actually wrong though. <laughs> for, for, for some, this will be the highlight of the program because it, it is such an amazing, amazing piece of music. Yeah. And um, it's short enough to kind of, enjoy it you know and mm -hmm. it leaves you with perhaps wanting a little bit more hopefully yeah, yeah. Um, and it's nice for us to be on stage just the three of us yeah. as well yes yes that, yes that was part of why we picked that right also. yeah i'm glad you did i'm really glad you did um the um uh the the, the beginning and the end of the program uh, you're joined by a, a juilliard graduate uh, uh, and marvelous pianist who actually was on our series in November <laughs> with, with Anthony McGill. Uh, and speaking of endowed chairs, she has the Henry Shevitz chair in collaborative piano this year. Oh. So she's oh. making a comeback uh, uh, during her chair year. Uh, but um, uh, you, so you're opening with the, the, the Mozart E flat, which uh, Ron, I imagine you played many, many times. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, and it, it, it's interesting in in the Mozart piano quartets how how different it is from the trios. It's almost like a miniature piano concerto. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, uh, tell us, give us a, a, a an orientation to this piece. Especially the last movement is very much well. Actually, the, the second movement yeah. and last movement yeah. are very much like piano concerti, mm -hmm. and. Uh, wonderful Mozart piano concerti, as you know, are, are amazing works of art. And and this is very much in that same mm -hmm. same guise. But the string parts are also really beautiful. Mm -hmm. and Colorful use of strings. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And it's um, um, they're fun to play. 
and we're certainly enjoying working on these. Yeah, um, well, and and the viola adds something so wonderful to the texture of a piano trio. I mean, I, I, I shouldn't make it an apology for the for the piano quartet. I, I guess at a certain time, piano quartets were at least as prominent, if not more. But but uh, um, uh, that that having that middle filled in so beautifully. Yeah. Well, I I fell in love with playing inner voices through the piano quartet literature. Mm. Yeah. And there's something about the the aspect of, from the interior of a chord, being able to make color and to kind of character, mold character and so forth, that is something that is actually quite, one, quite gratifying to do in a piano quartet. And that's one of the things that I just really enjoy about playing string quartets as well as being in the inner voices and how how much power you've got to change character yeah yeah i remember my uh, uh this is going way back i i, I studied with C cecile genhardt at eastman mm -hmm. and i remember uh she would occasionally ask me to nudge the third of a chord um uh, mm -hmm. just just to make it warmer and and uh of course a string instrument can do so much more of that than a than a piano <laughs> but uh but uh that's that's amazing so um uh, we'll, we'll be sure to listen for that. And of course, Gloria is such an amazing collaborative pianist and, and, you know, her, her she voice that, will mirror yours. Yeah. Uh, she has that same quality, you know, that, that you need a Mozart, yeah. any Mozart piece really. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we're very excited to play that with her. It's yeah. well, we can't hate, we, we can't wait to hear her again. That's it. But, <laughs> oh, nice. Yes. Nice. I was yeah. just going to say we, we all sort of know her from different mm -hmm. iterations and combinations in our, in our past, and so it's it's fun to be able to bring her into the fold for these. Yeah. Things. Super. Well, and then we're finishing with the Brahms. Um, the, he wrote three piano quartets. Is that that right? Yes. And mm -hmm. and uh, well, Ron, of course, you published. you played them all many times. Yeah. Three that he published. Oh, okay. Right. There are several others apparently that he wrote and didn't like. Didn't like. Not as many as string quartets. Right. Yeah. He wrote some yeah, 20 string true. quartets and threw them away. But yeah. yeah. He kept that fire in his house going just by <laughs> throwing in <laughs> his <laughs> string quartets. And violin sonatas too. And violin well, well, speaking of Brahms, uh, uh, Brahms chamber music, I, I remember when, when I, I got my score to the Brahms piano trios. Um, uh, noticing that they published in, in the Henley edition, they published the uh, the abandoned original version of the B major. Major, yeah. Uh, yeah. At the end, it's a terrible piece. <laughs> Same material, but it's terrible. I mean, the bad oh, transitions and it yeah. just it's too yeah. long. <laughs> he really improved. So maybe he maybe it wasn't a bad thing that he threw these things exactly. away. He knew what he was doing. He, uh, he, all right, well, trust him for yeah. all the other. Um, <laughs> Yeah. ambitions right for all the burning yeah. right, right. <laughs> oh well so tell us about the c minor mm. it's a darker work brooding and passionate and full of shadow and in many ways sort of complements this part of the season for us what this has meant uh coming through the last many weeks um but also a piece that offers quite a bit of beauty and, and hope. Um, so a lot we could sort of identify with the work. Um, yeah. And it's it's been a pleasure to delve in and find our footing. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, and and you know the, the Mozart and the and the Brahms are such they're both such amazing music. I, I'm I'm sure that playing them must be a little bit like therapy. <laughs> hmm. You know, it's 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 great 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 music uh, well we will really look forward to having you here uh, and of course we've been uh, on a roll having you every year <laughs> for almost a decade now uh, we always look forward to yeah. these concerts yeah. uh, and ne next year we have you coming um, I, I assume by then you'll be with a violist <laughs> Um, we assume so too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, Michelle Kahn, Kahn is joining you for uh, uh, the Schumann Piano Quintet, and that'll be a lot of fun. Um, 
And I, I, uh, I'm going to go ahead and throw this in the interview, but I want to challenge you to think about what we should do with you in, in the 23-24 season, which is our 80th. Oh, wow. Congratulations. Okay. Wow. So, so ponder that. <laughs> You're yeah. just as two two years older than the JSQ. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. Thank you for being such an amazing partner all yes. these years. Well, it, you know, it, it just makes great sense. And and what's been wonderful, uh, we actually, uh, um, I, I'm going to turn this a little bit down on the floor over here amidst the boxes that we still haven't unpacked. There's a whole bunch of framed pictures. And those are uh, pictures that my predecessors started collecting of, uh, of artists that perform here with, with signatures and so on. Yeah. And we've decided that we're going to devote a, a section of the wall to the Juilliard Quartet because oh, wow. we, have, we have about, I don't know, six different iterations of the Juilliard wow. Quartet. <laughs> wow. And it's always so exciting to see how you evolve and stay fresh and I, I think uh, your your ensemble and its tradition sets the bar uh, for string quartet longevity, um, and not just longevity as as for specific individuals, but the institution of the quartet. Nobody does this better than you do. Yes. Nobody. Uh, Any anyway. rate, it's good to hear that at a time like now when. Yeah. You know, of course, every time there's a change, there is a lot of uncertainty yeah. and you, yeah. there's some anxiety about, are we going to be able to get this right and so forth. And it's helpful to be reminded that, yeah, we've, we've done gotten, it before, we've done it before and we'll do it and, again. Yeah, we'll do it again. <laughs> well, I, I, I remember uh, in one of our interviews, uh, Astrid, you said that, um, that, that when someone leaves a quartet, they leave they leave a hole of a particular shape, <laughs> and the next person comes in and they're a different shape, and so the the hole has to shift, not just that's the plugging of the that's hole. Right. Yeah, I love. Isn't that, that nice? I was having a good day yeah. <laughs> <laughs> without even opening your mouth. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you know, we, we, we wish you extremely well and the very best for this. And we will absolutely look forward to hearing uh, the, the next iteration of the Juilliard Quartet and, and, and more after that. Not that we're going to kick, kick anybody out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, Thank thanks you. for joining us. Pleasure. A pleasure. <laughs>